Burlington's parking and street closure plans for the eclipse are finalized and the city is now planning to keep some roads closed a little bit longer. One of the major closures is the Beltline on 127. It will become the city's biggest parking lot by Monday afternoon. And that is where we find ABC 22's Matt Holderman with a preview of where to park and what to expect. Hi, Matt. Hi, Lauren. Yeah, that's right. Uh, come this Monday, the city's sort of eclipse uh, event planners are trying to, as you mentioned, turn the belt line behind me into the city's biggest parking lot. They are thinking and hoping they can fit up to a thousand cars, if not more, along the belt line behind me here and certain, uh, essentially turn it into a park and ride for the day, bringing folks from here, shuttling them to the downtown viewing areas. They ha expect to have about 22 shuttles uh, going back and forth from here. That will be happening from 10 a.m. to 8 p.m. on Monday. And a recent update, all of the roads around the city that are going to be closed are also now going to be closed until 8 p.m. as well. A last minute update coming from Burlington Eclipse planning officials. Some of the city's main roads like Battery Street and Park Street, as well as parts of College Street and North Avenue, will be closed to cars and open to pedestrians and shuttle buses from 10 a.m. until 8 p.m. Monday night. They were originally going to reopen at 6 in the evening, but with a good looking weather forecast, higher turnout is now expected. With the change in the weather and the number of people that we think are coming here, we are looking to keep those roads closer uh, closed until 8 o'clock at night, which was always our plan with the Beltline, but we are um, expanding that closure just by two hours in the evening, accommodate the crowds and make it a safer environment for everybody. And extra visitors expected means an even greater need for parking options. Event director Zach Williamson says the Beltline will be the main spot, but places like Letty Park and the Farmer's Market parking lot on Pine Street will be big options too. The Beltline is a major park and ride operation. Our downtown garages are open and it's a one-time day rate of $30 to park there on Monday. All street parking, if it's not on a closed street, is available as well. And then additionally, at 345 Pine Street, which is the lot that the Burlington Farmers Market happens on, we can park about 400 cars there, and that will be also $30 for the day. We also have parking at Letty Park. That is free parking, and you can go behind there and down to the waterfront. At Perkins Pier, right at the base of uh, College Street in Burlington, we have uh, a lot of great parking there, and that's a great spot to watch because you can get right, you can park right by the bike path and go and watch it in Perkins Pier. And then finally, Pease Lot right by Echo is available and most of those spots are going to be served for ADA parking for um, people who need a little bit of a closer parking spot. And although all of the areas that Williamson just listed could fit more than 2,000 cars combined, they are going to fill up fast. That is something we can likely guarantee. So if you do need to park in any of those areas come Monday, it's best to get there as soon as you can. The Beltline will be opening at 10 a.m. as we mentioned, and some of those other areas like the Farmer's Market parking lot, that will be opening at 9 a.m. And the free parking that everyone will be, will be looking for, the free spaces at Letty Park uh, likely could be opening very early in the day. According to Burlington Parks and Rec, Letty Park normally opens at 4.30 a.m. for their main lot. So uh, we'll see if that's the case on Monday as well. But for now, reporting live in Burlington, Matt Holderman, ABC 22 News. Wow, it could be an early rise for some people hoping to get the free parking. Matt, thank you. Now to the other big part of this whole thing the weather. This is we are learning that our region appears to be the place to be. So let's get to Sky Tracker meteorologist Haley Boulay. You have all the answers. I do and I have good news. The forecast looks great. It has held partly to mostly sunny skies is what we thought of probably close to two weeks ago, and that has been consistent. So here's the path of totality across the country. You can see Dallas, Texas, one of those areas in totality, and also one of those areas that trends a little bit sunnier this time of year, actually has a cloudier forecast than what we are looking at here in the north and east. A good chunk of the midsection of the path of totality with clearing, and in our area, we are looking at that partly to mostly sunny forecast. We do have a warm front that is going to start to notice into our region as we head into Monday evening. That will bring a little bit of extra cloud cover, but it may actually just bring a beautiful sunset 
rather than block our view of the actual eclipse. So here is the look at that cloud cover percentage. A lot of zeros on this map. That is what you want to see. You want to see 0% of the sky covered. So there isn't a chance that just a little cloud goes in front of the sun as totality happens. The Northeast Kingdom, a little bit of a concern for me right now as we do have a north and westerly wind that will likely bring us just a touch of extra cloud cover for some of the higher elevation zones and the Northeast Kingdom. And that's where the partly to mostly sunny forecast comes in temperatures in the low to mid 50s across the board. So we're in for a great forecast all around and this forecast has held consistently. So not expecting it to change at all. We'll have a look at the rest of the weekend because I know a lot of folks here, a lot of activities. We'll have a look at that in just a few minutes. Lauren.